All right, okay. Uh, this is started now. Bloody hell. I'm in a YouTube video. Need to be quite excited actually for this. Okay. <clears throat> Salutation to my comment. How are you guys doing? Welcome to this first ever series of How I Edited. Now, this series will be following the three short films that I worked on called How I Edited, Gone Girl, Misery, and Breathe, while also maybe doing future videos with the How I Edited series. Now, this first video, I'll be discussing how I edited the special or the uh, most time consuming effects that I did on Oliver Bin's Gone Girl short film adaptation. So, the first thing that you'll probably notice is the fact that the first shot is a visual effects shot. Ben, our actor, is standing there with the bridge with his fellow actress Danny and a truck appears and then he sort of just disappears. Now this is a very easy shot and I did it all on Premiere where I got the layer of the couple on the bridge just standing until a truck or some kind of big large vehicle went past and after that happened I told Ben to leave the scene and just leave Danny by herself and then the way I edited it was the two actors on the bridge. I got the other shot where the actual lorry was going past and then I masked it out on Premiere tracking it so it, it went bit by bit and it sort of made Ben disappear which was quite enigmatic I suppose so that was the first visual shot that I did the next uh, visual shot that I worked on hopefully you guys didn't really notice this because I'd like this to be invisible editing it was the shot of the diary when Danny, our actress, she's reading the diary. The reason why I edited this shot, the original shot, our director, he wanted the focus to be on the last word, but he told me after I filmed it. And so I was like, you know what, I'll fix it in post. And normally I hate when people say, oh, you can fix that in post and you can fix that on post. Well, because I was filming this myself and I knew I was gonna be editing this because that was my main role editing. And then I started filming. I knew what I was capable of. And the way I did this was I filmed it and then I took it to After Effects. And then you always, you always track the shot. So I, I created a null layer and I tracked the shot and then took a freeze frame and I masked it out, faded it in slowly by slowly. So we can't really tell that it's sort of focused already into the actual text on the diary. But that was the invisible editing that I did do and hopefully it wasn't too noticeable. But now that I mention it, you guys probably look back at it. You guys, oh shit, that is noticeable. The next shot that I did is the shot that I used in my Instagram trailer teasers. It's a shot that when I showed it to my mom or my sister, they were like, oh my gosh, it's like realistic. You know, it caught them off guard because it looked really dramatic. And it's the shot where Danny, she's falling down and she hits her head on the stair. That's the stair knob, a, a key, the knob, stair banister. I don't know what you call it. Now, the way I did that, it was in two shots. The first shot, which is the one that you guys are seeing right now, is when she falls. And because of safety reasons, we can't have her falling backwards because when she's leaning back, the actual staircase banister, it goes it goes low. So if she did fall backwards, it, she might actually hurt herself. It's not head level. I told um, Ollie, our director, to pull her. Action. Oh, sorry, did I do that? Sorry. Okay, can we go again? Yeah, can we go again? Sorry. Right, ready for action. Ready. <laughs> Remember, you're scared. Three, two, one. The way I did it, I reversed the shot and then I matched it up with the second shot. And so uh, this shot, uh, the one that you're seeing of her just falling, is reversed. And then the next shot that you see is um, Danny falling down. She's hit her head and she's slowly going down, down the actual banister. And the way I did that shot was, I took it to After Effects and I had to track it. And the reason why I had to track it was, if you look at it very closely, it's a handheld shot. Because we were in a corridor, quite a tight space, so I didn't have enough room for the actual tripod. I tracked the shot, created a null layer. And if you look at the actual picture on the wall very clearly, then you can see see that the actual picture is moving so you know it's a handheld shot but well, I had to track the shot so that way uh, the movement of the actual pictures don't move and it looks iffy or whatever it got to actual right position where I thought that there should be blood and I got some actual green screen stock footage of blood dripping down and I keyed it out put it on but then I played it back and I realized that it didn't look exactly right you know actual blood would curve on the actual shape of the actual banister so what I did I got a puppet tool and then I sort of shaped it out so it looked like it the actual drip of the liquid would go down and then you know you, you tend to color correct it and so it matches the actual scene but then now you can clearly see the actual blood is on top of Danny so what I had to do was I duplicated her layer and I had to mask her out as a separate layer and then put it on top so it seems like you know the blood is behind her I remember guys you gotta pair up the actual blood and everything that is dripping to the actual lone layer so the actual blood moves along with the camera movement. This next scene is also what I would call invisible editing only because on the actual day of shoot when I was shooting this, you guys have got to remember, I was filming three films and I was under pressure with trying to get everything done quick as possible. And so we were under pressure with time for this. And so under the circumstance, what I did because uh, of the space that we had, I left the door open for some of the scenes and then the actual inside light. In the actual original sequence of the shot, you could see that the interior, we have got a very orangey kind of uh, CP tone kind 
kind of color and then the outside shot where I left the door open for that just sunlight it was daylight it was clearly you know like a tungsten kind of daylight kind of light so what I had to do I had to color correct the scene color correcting is when you try to match up the actual color of the scene so it seems like it's you know matched up and quite clear that it's all in one scene and you know it's got no flaws or anything so the way I did that was I had to turn up the curves and just mess around with that and then I had to color grade it which is an overall color balance just try to give that same look or that tone to the actual sequence for that film now the next shot that you see is somewhat similar to the previous one where I had to match up the color color correct it again it's invisible editing for you guys but um, now you guys will notice because I had left the door open and the inside is supposed to be home lights which is like an orangey yellowy light and the outside is sunlight which is like a white bright light I had to mask out the door so when Ben's walking out the door as you can see him walking out right now the sun is hitting his face however and he's still inside the house so the house light is still lighting it up so the way I did that was I masked out the door and as Ben's walking out the door the sun the sunlight is on him and the inside orange light is on Danny and then there is a clear difference you know with and without him without the actual color correction of this uh, clip so that does make a massive difference and hopefully that's invisible editing but you guys didn't notice but um yeah this shot is quite cool um i didn't really edit this too much it was i just i just like this shot it's a tracking shot that i did i got asked if i used like some kind of dolly or whatever but i was like nah that's just me all handheld and i was like i was quite chuffed with that to be, to be, to be honest so i just wanted to show you guys that shot Ah, now here's the belly shot. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the shots towards the end of the shot, you realize are kind of grainy or the color is off or whatever. And that's because I wasn't present in the day of uh, those shoots. And that's because our actress, she was unavailable to make the shoot. So Ollie had to get a stand-in actress. And so uh, she was playing the actual pregnancy. With, that was her tummy, as you can see. Now, unfortunately, Ollie isn't too equipped with using a camera. I don't blame him because to the naked eye, when you see the actual scene, it seems like there's enough light. But what you guys don't realize in a lot of the scenes where you shoot in darkness or it seems like a dark night kind of shoot or whatever like that we do like have a, a fair bit of light and then you sort of bring it down in in post or kind of uh, bounce off lights and everything this is the like original shot that you guys can see but what i had to do i had to add a shadow highlight and then sort of blend it in and that way you can see that it does add a bit more color because the wall you know in the original shot is full on white but the actual actress she's she's not uh, well lit so that's why i had to do and balance it out and it's a bit it's a wee bit grainy but you just can do what you can now this is towards the end of the film and this is the last mirror shot and it's funny though because this mirror shot that you just see right now towards the end of the film that was the original first mirror shot that we did but then it was like no we need some lighting on Ben because a brown person like I am and so we you know we we kind of need light that's the, that's the that's the trouble sharing <laughs> it sounds quite racist but I'm allowed to say it because I'm a person of color myself but if you share a screen with a person who's much more fair skinned than yourself the actual lighting situation is quite difficult to do like me for example right now I'm using a fair bit of light on my face. If I had one of my white friends with me right now, um, his face would be too blown out. So that's the kind of balance that you kind of have to, you know, struggle with. But it's one of those things, it's cinematography. It's, it, that's, how, that's how film and art kind of works. You kind of have to balance things out. Um, but yeah, so this well, original was the first shot that we used, but then I thought, you know what, he looks too sinister. So I'm gonna use it towards the end because in David Fincher's actual Gone Girl, they repeat the same shot, first shot and the last shot. So I thought, you know what, we'll repeat that. So that's what I did. So that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys enjoy the series that I'm gonna do on how I edited these certain videos or certain uh, short films with special effects or anything like that. Please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe and also let me know what interests you and what you'd like me to talk about some more. Would it be cameras or would it be the actual editing style that I did or anything like that um, join me next time where I'll be discussing the editing for misery and where I might or might not be wearing the same top because it's definitely got to do with the fact that I'm really really extremely poor and nothing to do with the fact that I'm marathoning recording a lot of these videos all in one go nothing to do that at all <laughs> so um hope you guys enjoyed this video please be sure to comment like and subscribe remember guys geeks are cool so love peace and feel gender okay bye <laughs> the nagging wife the controlling bitch i'm not that person i'm your wife <laughs> <laughs>